Hey everybody, this is Leslie, and you're watching Midlife and Nailing It. Today I'm participating with a ton of amazing women on YouTube in a cookbook collab. I'll be making a crock pot corn chowder and a county fair pie. Hey guys, I'm just gonna film this little bit on my phone and then we'll get right into the video. I wanted to welcome anyone that's watching this from someone else's channel. I'm really excited you're here. Please consider subscribing to my channel. Um, I am so excited to participate in this collab from Tamara uh, from Southern Wife Everyday Life. I love her channel. I've been watching her since she was at about 250 people. And boy, oh boy, has her channel grown. Um, so I am very excited to participate in this collab. So let's go ahead and get started. And in true midlife and nailing it form, if you're new, you don't know this, but it's something you gotta get used to if you watch my channel. I totally forgot to say that Tamara's um, channel as well as the playlist of everybody else will be linked in my description box below. Please check all these lovely people out. Okay, now we're really going to get started. All right, guys. So I decided to use this Fix It and Forget It Lightly cookbook. This was actually Randy's cookbook. Um, I went to grab a cookbook and I forgot that so many of my cookbooks had been damaged uh, when we had some flooding in our basement like a couple years ago uh, before we moved into our new home. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I only had a few to choose from. So this is the recipe that I came up with. For those of you that aren't familiar um, with the Fix It and Forget It, Franchise, really, it is Phyllis Pellman Good is this lady's name. Um, she does mostly crock pot recipes. Um, this one's supposed to be lightly. I don't know if I agree that all these recipes in here is what I would consider light. Because, <laughs> I mean, even this recipe is going to have a little butter in it. Uh, but it is what it is. This is the book that I'm using uh, for my main dish here. So let's go ahead and go over the ingredients really quick. So you're going to need a pound of fresh or frozen corn. Um, I've got some chicken bouillon back there. I've got a cup of water. I have an onion that I'm going to have to dice up. Um, you're going to need some butter. I know it's not the stick. I'll give you amounts as I'm throwing it in my crock pot. Uh, you're going to need some thyme and then um, I'm using 21 Seasoning Salute instead, so that I'm kind of substituting because I think you can grab a recipe and make it your own. Um, it does call for pepper, but pepper is in 21 Seasoning Salute. And actually, I'm going to check the ingredients on that because I might not use thyme if it's in there. So that'll be that. You're going to need some celery. Um, you are going to need some potatoes. And again, I'll go over the amounts in a minute. Uh, and then I am throwing in some andouille sausage uh, into my corn chowder. I like to put spicy sausage into corn chowder. Anytime I've made it, the recipe didn't call for that, but I'm adding it in. So I'm gonna go ahead and get everything all portioned out. And then as I'm throwing it into my crock pot, I'll let you know the amounts. All right, everybody, so I'm starting, this is actually a cup of water and I put two teaspoons of chicken bouillon in it. I suppose you could use veggie bouillon or whatever, probably not beef, uh, but yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that to my crock pot. It also calls for one tablespoon of butter or margarine. I did cut up our andouille sausage. The recipe doesn't call for this, so you don't have to do this. It's optional, but I'm adding it in. I'm adding two celery stalks here. It calls for one, but I think I need to add two. And then it calls for one large onion diced up. And then lastly, it wanted one and a half cups of diced up potatoes. I have red skin potatoes here. I'm doing it rustic, so I don't peel. Um, there's a lot of nutrients and what have you in potato skin, especially red potato skin. So I'm leaving it on and uh, this equaled out to about, oh, four medium sized red skin potatoes, but it always depends. Potatoes come in all shapes and sizes. 
Okay guys, so it does call for one pound of corn. I have a two pound uh, frozen bag of corn. I'm just gonna go ahead and roughly add half of that. Um, it's the equivalent of about four or five ears of corn, again, depending on the size. So I'm gonna go ahead and just stir this up. Of course, vegetables make their own juice as everything cooks down. And then there's a few more steps once this has cooked towards the end. Um, I do wanna add, I almost forgot, 21 seasoning salute. Of course, the recipe calls for thyme and pepper but I'm using this instead, and I'm just eyeballing it here. Um, let's see, the directions say a fourth teaspoon of dried thyme and a fourth teaspoon of pepper. Um, pepper's in this, thyme's in this, we're good. Plus some other yummy stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and just give this a quick stir, get my lid on, and then we will be in business. I'm gonna cook this on low for eight to nine hours or until the potatoes are tender. And then I've got some flour and milk to add in there. I imagine I make a slurry. I don't know, I didn't get that far in the ingredients. Kind of on my lunch break right now, so I'm in a big hurry. Uh, sorry if I seem brushed with this one, but I'm also gonna make a pie in a little bit too. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that going on low, guys, and uh, we'll check back in in a moment. So full disclaimer here, the recipe does say to cook this on low for eight or nine hours, uh, but I'm on my lunch break and I need this at dinner time, so I'm gonna cook this on high for four hours. I don't know why it would matter. I think you just have to cook it until the potatoes are done. Uh, so I'll let you know if it doesn't turn out because I made that choice, um, <laughs> but I'm going to go ahead. I'm living on the edge, people. All right, I'll be back to show you what we do with the flour and a little bit of milk in just a bit. Okay, guys, so I'm coming in here. My potatoes are done. Um, everything smells really good, and I'm just, I gave this a quick stir so this is what it looks like at this point. I'm going to put the lid back on and we're going to get together our little flour concoction here that the recipe calls for. Now this is the part where it lost me as being you know a light recipe. This is definitely not light. Um, I went ahead and used 2% milk. Uh, you could use whatever milk you wanted. It just called for three cups. I've got it in my big Pyrex here. Sorry for the shadow. It is what it is. I did not get my light out. I've, I'm just, I'm having a busy day, guys. So this is six tablespoons of flour, which I also find funny because I feel like that's probably either between a fourth and a half a cup of flour. I thought that was odd. I started getting them out and I'm like, one, two, three. And I'm like, wait a minute. Why wouldn't they just have used like a cup measurement? I don't know. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and whisk all of this together when the sun sets guys I get a weird shadow in my kitchen I have to be like very careful about the time I film my videos in my new kitchen I suppose I could put the curtain down but I don't want to yeah I can just deal with it so I'm whisking that all in and then I'm going to pour that into the crock pot so I am gonna go ahead and pour this right in at first I was like that's not real soupy but I guess it is now so yeah that's a better consistency um, so it said to stir this in until it thickened up uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put the lid on and let this thicken up a little bit and then I'll show you what it looks like plated up Oh, this looks so good, you guys. It smells delicious. So I'm all about my corn chowder right now. So next up, you'll get to see the pie. My daughter's excited. I'm very excited. She is, she's pretty darn excited. So the pie recipe that I'm gonna make comes out of Best of Taste of Homes. It's been a minute since I got into this cookbook, but I do know once upon a time, I used the heck out of this cookbook, probably 25 years ago like for real it's been a long time um and i'm gonna go ahead there's a little bit of a glare guys because of my light but i'm gonna go ahead and make this pie right here it's called the county fair pie and as i was going through my cookbooks i noticed that i starred this i put the word yummy with an exclamation point so i guess 
I really liked it like 20 years ago or more. And so I think I remember making this pie. And if I remember correctly, it's kind of like a Toll House chocolatey kind of yumminess. Um, I don't know that I'm going to eat any of this, but the kids will. They're going to be pretty excited because you want to know when I make pies? It's called Thanksgiving. I'm not much of a dessert maker. Okay, so I preheated my oven at 325. And then I went ahead and got a stick of butter, which is a half cup of butter, into my bowl. I softened it in the microwave. You can soften it using whatever method you'd like. To that, I'm going to add one cup of sugar, two eggs, and one teaspoon of vanilla. I'm going to go ahead and grab my mixer and get this all mixed together. Uh, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so I've got that all whipped up. I'm going to go ahead and add, um, ooh, that was a plop. I'm going to go ahead and add a half cup of flour here. So I'm going to go ahead and whip that up, and I'll be right back. So I just went ahead and grabbed this two-cup measuring cup uh, by Purex, and I filled half of it up with one cup of chocolate chips. I had mini chocolate chips on hand. You, of course, can use whatever kind of chocolate chips you'd like. And then I've got one cup of the butterscotch uh, chips up there. I'm gonna go ahead and pour those in. And then I'm gonna get this mixed together. I've got about a cup of uh, walnuts here. I just roughly chopped them. Um, I didn't go nuts on them, but yeah, and I didn't show that part because I have so many videos where I have roughly chopped uh, nuts here, walnuts, pecans, whatever. Um, you just use your knife <laughs> and chop them up. Uh, so they're in my mixture here. I'm going to go ahead and mix that up. Okay, guys, so this is what it looks like all incorporated. Um, it's more like a cookie batter. So if you're looking for something runny, that's not the way this batter is. Uh, I'm going to get my pie crust out of the packaging and get this in here and I'll show it to you one more time before we get it into the oven. Okay guys, this is my pie before it goes into the oven. Remember that's a 325 degree oven for one hour and do keep in mind that the batter is more like a cookie dough. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this into the oven. All right, everybody, I took this pie out quite a few hours ago and I let it cool. You do wanna let this one cool. It can be a little bit warm, um, but it won't cut very nicely uh, if it isn't cooled a bit. Okay, guys, here is a piece of that pie plated up. My crust fell off, you guys. It's so sad. It's always so very hard to get the first piece out, isn't it? <sighs> I'm gonna go ahead and let my daughter try this. We all know that I already think it's yummy because, you know, it said it in the cookbook from 25 years ago. Um, and then also to let you know that corn chowder was delicious. I mean, it was actually way beyond my expectation. It is definitely going to be in our regular rotation, especially through the winter here and winters to come. So I highly recommend both of these recipes. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.